Uh, very good evening to you. It's me, Scotty McLeod. We are, of course, live on Facebook Live, the world's top broadcast platform, one hour of superb scintillating information, education, and entertainment globally for the world. With the world's top broadcaster, me, Scotty McClure. A very, very good evening to you. It's 10 o'clock on Sunday night, Sunday the 2nd of April 2017. And we have so much to talk about tonight and so much to discuss. Now, I'm needing a bit of a favour from you. I have two things running at the moment. Two separate broadcast systems. And I need to know what you're seeing and what you're hearing. So let me know if you can see me and let me know if you can hear me. One is a backup system, of course. And uh, Mossy Puffins on there. Good morning, Scotty, from Sydney in Australia. Good morning to you, Mossy. Lovely to have you with us. Hey, Scotty. Jim Morris is watching. Howdy, partner. Sir Robert Bain. One minute past, says Edward James. Yes, it will be now, Edward, because we were on here just in time. Good evening, Scotty, says Jim Clark. Now, what are you hearing and what are you seeing, guys? Because, as I say, I've got two systems running, so very, very big experiment. Once we get this sorted out, then we are big time. We are flying. All right, so tell me what you're getting there. That would be excellent. See and hear you loud and clear. See and hear you fine. Any echoes or any sound problems, any visual problems, anything like that, do tell. Can some of you see all of my bonnet, and can some of you just see a bit of my bonnet? Excellent, but Morsi's out in Australia there, in Sydney. Good evening, Scotty. I hope you're well. It's lovely to see you, my dear old mate, says Carl Morris. Uh, see it here, you're loud and clear, says Alex Duff. It's like your pick is with a soft focus. And good evening from the Denny page, Mark from Central there. Fantastic. Uh, you seem to be a bit foggy. But all clear apart from that. I can't see you, says Edward James. Must be to do with your equipment, Edward. All of the bonnet. Fantastic. So if you're seeing all of the bonnet, that is absolutely dinky do. We will press on. Now, we have a lot to discuss tonight. So there we are. Poor video and audio, Scotty, says Andy McCrory. Very pixelated, says Alex Robertson. Oof, I'm not seeing very much. Video know the best, but your dulcet tones coming through loud and clear. I can't see your handsome visage. Aha! Now, that's interesting. If I wave to you just like that, can you see me? Because, as I say, I've got uh, two systems running. All of the bonnet, and hearing you loud and clear, and seeing you as well. Think you're okay? Good picture and great sound. Bobby Grace is watching Dinky Doo. Bit foggy around the chin. Hello from Gavin of Loch Winnoch. I think that's probably a shadow caused by the fact there's more than one chin, Gavin. So there you go. Dinky do. Lovely to have you all with me, of course. Big discussion program tonight. We have to finish at 11 o'clock sharp. So, so much to talk about and so little time to do it in. I hope you've all had a great week. Now, can I just have a quick word uh, about the social media, of course. Share, 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 share. Anything that you see with Scotty McClure on it, please do share it, because we are building a global program. And I know you've heard all this before, but if you can just bear with me, and let's keep building and building and building. Rome, perhaps one of the finest cities in the world. In fact, definitely one of the finest cities in the world, apart from Glasgow, of course, uh, and Edinburgh, and Aberdeen, and Inverness, and Carlisle, and Newcastle, and um, Liverpool, and Leeds, and Birmingham, and uh, what's the other one? There's another one I'm missing. Um, oh yes, London, that's right. So there you are. So, all of these very, very fine cities, but Rome was not built in a day. So Scotty McClure's global program won't appear in a day. But if I can have a word with you about social media, remember, of course, that you can get me on all sorts of social media, Google+, LinkedIn, the Scotty McClure YouTube channel, a lot of new stuff uploaded there. So go on and enjoy, indulge yourselves, I say. And uh, lots and lots of sharing. So they are. Good evening, Scotty. My friend says, Daniel Joseph. 
a fine, fine fellow. I say Mary Carty, Andy McClory, Julianne Scott. Tremendous stuff. Julianne Scott down in Wales. How marvellous is that, Julianne? So there you are. So try and make an appointment to listen at 2200 hours British summer time. Now, I think there were less of you last week because of the clock change. So just be wary of that. The United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, uh, perhaps soon to change, has uh, got a very strange habit of moving the hour back and forward. In the spring, they move forward, and in the autumn, they move back. So there you go. Very, very strange. Diochen Fjord says Julianne Scott. Have I said it right, Julianne? Must I say? And Yakida. Uh, so there we are. Scotty, how much would a McClue stamp cost? Says Edward Jones. Oh, I think, do you mean putting my head and face on the stamps? Well, I think that would be expensive. I think that would be a five pound stamp. Something going abroad. Something heavy going abroad. Like my good self. Uh, so there we are. But I've always wondered if we should have Scotty McClue on the bank notes. I think that would be excellent. Scotty McClue on the bank notes. And a dinky do to you, Scotty. Yes, just about Scotty, says Julianne Scott. So I nearly got it right when I was talking to Julianne there. Uh, George says a big stamp. Oh, it would have to be a big stamp, George. Thanks very much. You are filled with compliments. I say excellent stuff. And uh, also, George Mullins watching. That's tremendous. Now, what are we discussing tonight? I hear you screaming at your social media devices, your magical phones, your tablets, your PCs, all that sort of thing, where you can pick Scotty McClure up live every Sunday night at 10 o'clock sharp. Well, we're looking at traditional marriage tonight. Now, is traditional marriage starting to free a bit at the edges? Because we have a lot of feminism going on at the moment. So the ladies are not prepared to be the little ladies that just sort of do everything they're told, obey their husbands and honour their husbands. There's a lot of, I that will be right, and that sort of thing. And a lot of single mothers out there, of course, without a man. Some of them can get one, others don't want one. So what we're talking about there is very, very interesting. Is there still a lot of strength in traditional marriage? You tell me. This is your program. I might be popping up and presenting it, but it's the people's program. It's your program. We discuss facts here. We get everything as right as we possibly can. We have no strange agenda. So there you go. Uh, why no streaming videos, says Rudy Sack? We should be streaming, Rudy. Everything should be absolutely fine. And I've got two systems running. So I would hope that you're seeing me streaming. I hope I'm not still. Scotty, Halloween cakes, says Nivag Sheetek. Uh, no sound either, says so Rudy. Rudy, that's your equipment, because everybody else seems to be getting it loud and clear. Are we all getting it loud and clear, folks? Can you tell me that? I've uh, never been married, Scotty, but thinking of it as a good one at last. So there you are. What are tonight's topics, says Rudy? That's what we're talking about. Can everybody hear me? Is the video streaming just as it should be? Do please tell. Spill, 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 spill. Cheryl, William Black's watching, and uh, Mark Gippert. Where is, is that wee fat Bob? I do not know. Scotty, there's a ridiculous post going on Facebook saying uh, Nicola Sturgeon is not liked in Scotland. Uh, worse than Thatcher, have you seen it? George, you never ever listen to any of that rubbish. There's a lot of jealousy about the fact that Nicola Sturgeon is, is perhaps the finest leader in the world today. Very, very interesting. Tremendous support for independence in Scotland. Now, I'm not a political animal, as you all well know, so we're not talking about the SNP here, we're talking about the Scots. Uh, the latest poll that I have, the most honest poll, is that around 72% of Scots are looking for independence now. A lot of it because of Brexit and because of no hope being attached by an umbilical cord to, um, to uh, the rest of the country. 
So there you go. So I wouldn't listen to any rumours about that. It's an appointment to watch, Scotty McClue, says Ben Lucas. I thank you, Ben. Dinky do to you. Lovely to have you with us. Um, I hope nobody's getting any interference because, as I say, we're running two broadcast systems tonight in the hope that we won't have an interruption. The other one can kick in. Billy Matheson's watching Dinky Do. I say Dinky Do to you, Billy. Now, what is the time? Ah, yes. Excellent stuff. So we're about 12 minutes past. We'll have a share point. Can everybody share this video? Share, 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 share. If you can't join us live at 10 o'clock sharp British summer time, adjust your clocks for that, then um, do try and catch us when we're uploaded onto um, YouTube. So there you are. A lot of videos, 209 videos for you, for your edification and delight on YouTube. Excellent stuff. Now, uh, so we're looking at marriage. Also, Brexit. Have we jumped the gun a bit with Brexit? This is one for the British people, but the rest of the world can just as happily join in. Uh, so we're looking at if we've uh, jumped the gun here with Brexit, have we put the uh, cart before the horse? There's a McClurism for you. The cart before the horse. It's an old saying, of course, but it's a McClurism in this point. Have we put the cart before the horse? In other words, should we have had Indy Ref 2 for Scotland before Mrs. May triggered Article 50 for the UK coming out of the EU. I hope you like all these little acronyms there. Richard Mackay is watching Dinky Doo. It's all coming through loud and clear, Scotty, says Dave Hemsley. And Dave, you're a man whose judgment I trust implicitly because you've been a Scotty McClue fan for 25 years this year. On the uh, 27th of June, 2017, that's Scotty McClue's Silver Jubilee. What we're doing, we're collecting money, not for me, but for an independent Scottish media with no bias. So there you are. So a, a new agenda. So if you'd like to see a new Scottish media, I'm raising five million pounds. Now I will do it. It's as simple as that. So you may as well get going and join in. You've all had your hollow laugh. Ha, ha, ha. He'll never do that. The man's dreaming. All that kind of nonsense. But yes, we will do it. And it will happen. We've got £310 at the moment. Now, I would like to see that as a £1,000 by the end of tonight's program. So, guys, if you've got a spare couple of quid, two quid, get your debit card. It's all official, all above board, all written down there. The videos are there and everything. And you go on to GoFundMe and uh, forward slash scotty hyphen mcclue www.gofundme.com or one word gofundme.com and then forward slash s-c-o-t-t-i-e hyphen m-c-c-l-u-e or just put in the scotty mcclue show at gofundme up will come the page and if you can share the page if you genuinely um, can't give don't want to give don't have a bean uh, if you're a bit of a tighty then um, don't worry about that share the page because it's got twitter and facebook shares on it and i'd like every single one of you to share it now you obviously can't do it during the program unless you're multitasking with uh, a couple of devices but we'll uh, give you these details later and i would like to see that move up to a thousand pounds once we got our first thousand pounds if everybody in scotland gave one pound we'd have our target by the end of tonight so that's it how amazing it is crowdfunding at its very very finest uh, so there we are uh, now what have we got here we definitely have not jumped the gun with brexit says dave hemsley well i wonder if we have dave because if Scotland had decided to go independent, which it may well do, probably will do now actually with Brexit, then it would have meant that Mrs May could see what she actually had to work with because I genuinely think that they're kidding themselves with all this. We need to work together for Brexit. Most folk do not want Brexit, right? And, uh, you know, they, they, some of them voted... It was very, very close, but some of them voted for it. People like myself, I mean, I voted uh, for it because I wanted more money for the NHS, and I also did not think there was a chance it would happen. And I think most Brexiteers did not think 
there was a chance it would happen. So they got a fight. They got a shock. And Mrs. May herself, of course, voted to remain in the UK. So she's had to do an about turn. A volta faça. Right, John Toms is watching. Dinky do. Very fine businessman there. Great social media man, John Toms. Handy man to know, I always say. And uh, £9.99 on the network or three for streaming sites, yes. We're not just talking about the program, Lee. We're talking about purchasing media assets here and growing a proper independent media. So there you go. Uh, Mrs. May is a totty, no, is a Tory, I think you mean to say. Spelling mistake there, we typo. Um, it has to be authorised by Mrs. May first as Dave Hemsley. Well, at the moment, yes. But in actual fact, if you look at very early legislation for the Treaty of Union, you'll find that Scotland should be treated as an absolute equal, on a par with, uh, with England. So uh, there you go, Dave. There's a wee bit of information for you. And we want to all stay within the law, don't we? Um, you're watching the biggest show of the year, says Lee Buckinshaw. Absolutely, Lee. Scotty McClue's massive, mighty mega program globally. Live on Facebook Live. Massive, massive broadcast platform. Several thousand saw last week's program. Thank you for that. I thank you. That is absolutely marvellous. And also, um, what have we got here? Oh, yes, Derek McGonagall's watching now. Dinky do to you, Derek. Lovely to hear from you. And uh, we will keep chatting and see what is what I say. Very, very important. Right, if you've just joined us, a very warm welcome. You're watching Scotty McClure. We are, of course, live on Facebook Live, the world's top broadcast platform. We're global. Our first uh, person on tonight was Morsi. Morsi Puffin from Sydney in Australia. So let us know where you're watching uh, when you're coming on. Very, very important. And uh, we're discussing marriage tonight. Do you think there is still a market for traditional marriage, right? Also, have we jumped the gun with Brexit? Have we put the cart before the horse? Should we have waited until Scotland had voted in India Ref 2 before tri triggering Article 50? for the UK leaving the EU. Tell us what you think about that. Get on to the program. I'm going to find even more ways to interact. So obviously you can interact right there and then with uh, with your typing fingers. David Cameron and George Osborne uh, have been found out to be... Ah, no, no, I'm not going to mention that, George. I'm not coming on with all that sort of stuff. So there you go. Um... Marry me, Scotty. Yes, I know, says Edward James. Edward, I don't think I'm on your bus, but thank you very much for the invitation. Very much appreciated. Uh, too many youngins getting married too quick and splitting up the next year, says Angie Thompson. Angie, that is a very, very fair point. And, of course, the cost of a wedding is not inconsiderable. So there you are. Are you having lush weather in Bonnie Scotland, says Julian Scott. Julian. We had the most heavenly day today, the best we've had for a long time. Warm and very spring-like. So there you are, very, very pleasant. Because everybody gets out in the garden, or the window boxes. So yes, your answer to that is yes, lush, lush weather. Right, uh, Scott McClure live on Facebook, live. Uh, can I just run through some of the social media, of course? Uh, I've already mentioned YouTube. So the Scotty McClure YouTube channel, a lot of recent stuff coming up there, very, very important. If you're a big boss and you're out there and you own television and radio stations, you own newspapers, you've got a telephone system running, then see if you want to do something with me, Scotty McClure, if we can get our heads together and appear on your network as well. There's nothing to stop this program going absolutely international on all platforms. So there you are. Same with the mobile phone companies. If anybody's watching from the mobile phone companies, feel free to approach Scotty McClure. I am very, very approachable. An absolute pitch to work with, of course, when it comes to business. And if you'd like this program on your network, it'll get you a big, big audience. That's what I say. 
Um, now, recent stats are showing married couples are increasing staying married and unmarried couples with children are not staying together. So if they've got a piece of paper and they've drawn up a contract, they're more likely to stay together than a couple that are just living over the brush, as we say in this country. Um, my missus says, I have to be the boss in the house. I have to call her and tell her why. You should have a debate about pigeons. Are they a pest or are they lovable? They're creatures, Angie. They should be allowed to live the same as the rest of us. Scotty, one of the Tories offer full Devo Max to Scotland. All Westminster controls is foreign affairs and defence. Well, uh, that's a very, very interesting thought. I mean, Scotland needs to have control of its own broadcasting and it should also have regulation of its own broadcasting. The British Broadcasting Corporation takes about 320, 325 million pounds out of Scotland, 9% of the license fee, and uh, apparently gives back 3% of the programming. So we shall find out what's going on there. Uh, so, yes, full Devo Max, Martin. Mm, I think everything should be controlled. Scots would be better at running their own affairs. I mean, right now, at the moment, regardless of people who argy-bargy and criticise and get jealous for their own agenda, Scotland has never been better run. So there you are, Alex Salmond and Nicola Sturgeon have done a fantastic job, dare I say, pardon the pun, a sterling job. Uh, so, what have you got? Not a chance, Martin, says Des Hemsley. So, right, so there we are. So, we wouldn't accept Devo Max, says Dave. So, it looks like full independence for Scotland, I say. Just find out I've got something in common with my wife. We got married on the same day, says George. How fantastic. There you are. And uh, I have a friend who talks about his first wife. She's his only wife, right enough, the first wife. And somebody was telling this week that they reckoned if you are um, a religious person and you have full belief in Adam and Eve starting the world, then Adam was created first. And it seems the reason for creating Adam first is so that God and Adam could have a chance to discuss things without being interrupted. So they oh, before Eve arrived. Uh, fantastic. Yes, you will have something in common with your wife. Now, share spot. Can we share? Share, 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 share. Start sharing this video right now, folks, as widely as you possibly can to every single contact in your network. And also, can you type in, are you watching Scotty McClure right now on Facebook Live? Take the link off the top of the page and send the link round. So right click on the link and send it round. You've got to be up there. You've got to be in it to win it, guys. You've got to be up there with the social media. So I'm afraid there's a big, big chaff about links and about sharing and about going live. Very, very important. Mention this program as often as you possibly can. Say, do you watch Scotty McClure on a Sunday night at 10 o'clock sharp between 10 and 11? So there you go. Get that mentioned. Dinky do, so Scotty from Phil and Sophia in uh, Worcestershire. Sorry we're late tuning in. Kiss kiss. Please say hi to Sophia, the wifey who's knitting as we watch you. Now Phil, what she do? Is she knitting Scotty McClure a new bonnet? That's the stuff. I've got this bonnet. Have you noticed we've got a different bonnet on tonight? So there you go. Very, very fetching. Very swish. None of your nonsense. Lynn Kay says, if men are to be obeyed, then they should place the women on a pedestal. Well, I mean, yes, we do that. I mean, do all you guys open the car door for your missus? Do you tell her to put her feet up and that you'll get her a wee something, uh, a wee touch of uh, something to eat? Um, I was married once, and no word of a lie. I asked him for a divorce two hours later, says she. Sends me a kiss. Mm, fantastic. Uh, with EU Schengen, freedom of movement to work is a border likely between Gibraltar and Spain. And if not, would an independent Scotland require one with England? Now, Rudy Sack, a fabulous question. You bring me on to our next subject for discussion on this very program. There's talk that the customs could hold things up. 
right, some serious holdups at customs and at borders. Now, what I'm saying, if they are negotiating Brexit right now, which they are, and for not they should be, um, then I think that during the negotiations, well, it wouldn't have started yet, of course, in, in earnest, but there will be lots of discussion going on. And I think one of the points raised should be no borders, all right? We're, having, we're coming out of the EU, but we don't want borders. Now, I know the xenophobes are saying, oh, look at the immigrants in Scotland. is vastly, vastly, vastly depopulated. You can be driving through a glen in Scotland and see not another soul. And by the side of the road, you might see just a little pile of stones, a rickle of stains as they would say in Scotland, a Rickle in Scotland's wonderful, wonderful, expressive language. And we talk about Rickle Stains. Now that Rickle Stains may have been a village. If you go to a little island off the Sound of Harris in the Hebrides, a little island called Pabbe, there's not a soul lives on Pabbe. The sheep live on Pabbe. And uh, Pabbe, beautiful, beautiful island, had um, three churches and was home to 300 people. Then you had your highland clearances. This is where there's huge friction with, uh, with, with the South over the years. Now, I know it's a long time ago. This is historic friction, but it still hasn't been sorted. And there's still a huge arrogance that we lead the world down South, you know, and the rest can just fall into line. Newsflash, not happening. All right, very, very important to get that message across. Now, Scotland is depopulated through social injustice. This is not a chip on the shoulder. This is an explanation. I'm not excusing anything. I'm explaining it. Right, so Scotland has been depopulated through social injustice. Now, wouldn't it be lovely to repopulate Scotland through social justice? And anybody that goes on, right, I have to get across, there's no connection at all between British nationalism and Scottish nationalism. They are the antithesis. They are the complete opposite, right? British nationalism is a right-wing xenophobic thing. Scottish nationalism is a left-of-centre caring thing, all right? So have you got that? Scotty, you really need to go on for an hour every weeknight. I do think that, I like to think there's, I do, I do think you would like to think there is something that stops you. No, George, I don't think there is anything official stopping. And this is all up for discussion. I want to build a network. We may even present at six o'clock news every night on social media for people. Uh, why is there no news coverage regarding Spain's foreign minister advising they would not veto Scotland's membership of the EU if we gained independence in the future? Because, Rudy, what you will find is that what's called mainstream media tends to favour unionism. So we need a, a media that also balances things up and explains the truth about independence and people are not terribly keen on the truth and politicians tend to be very concerned about the people they don't seem to feel they know the people there's a them and us now there should never ever ever be a them and us there's only us okay so there should never ever be a them and us so be very wary of people who wish to divide I do not think that Spain would veto Scotland at all. I can't see that happening. So there you are. Uh, in fact, I don't think they'd be able to. Uh, Eddie Freeman's watching Dinky Doo. Share, 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 share. Get back on the radio. There's lots of people out there that do not know what they're missing. Absolutely, guys. We need to get the numbers up all the time. Now, this program has come on by leaps and bounds. This is program number 28 so we've been going just over six months on a sunday night for one hour only between 10 o'clock and 11. the very fact that it's global 
is fantastic. So the numbers are out there, they just don't know about the programme. That's why I'm so very, very hot and saying, can you share, share, share. Also, I would like to spend some of the money that you have funded me with on advertising the programme. So that's why I want you to go fund me. It's only a couple of pounds to you, but it can be um, turned into some serious, serious money that can be invested in the programme, in an independent, unbiased media without an agenda. So that's why it's GoFundMe. So it's not really a joke, believe it or not. It actually is there. Now, if you want to know my credentials, I've been in television and radio for 33 years, right? And I've been right at the very, very leading edge of broadcasting for 33 years. I've been in the entertainment industry for 40 years this year. Woo! Right? Celebration time. And I know I only look 20. You know, I do have some experience. I've worked at the most senior levels. I've worked with boards, with directors, with all these people. So there you are. That just happens to be. And I've always been a person who's thought, I need to build the experience. Now is the time to join on to put the business experience together with the broadcasting experience and build you guys a lovely, lovely network that I can pass on. So there you go. Uh, thank you for your common sense and your very perceptive answer, says Rudy. Uh, the Tories have just cut £30 a week from ESA Employment Support Allowance. Yes, Eddie. I'm very, very concerned about this. We could definitely shave a lot of money off the defence budget and put it on to social care. Yeah? And I, and I mean, that should be happening. I don't want to be looked at as some sort of pinko, lefty, softy character. Right? Because I'm not. I'm not even a political animal. But I am an economist. That's my original trade. Banking and finance. So there you are. Uh, and, um, you know, I, I think that when people are genuinely ill and sick and what have you, we need a society, the same as appeared after the Second World War, that went through this country like a dose of salts, far too much in some cases. They were very damaging to the big estates and the country houses. They were very damaging to those that had been very, very wealthy. Now, I like to see parity. I like to see people being looked after. But you shouldn't sell off the family silver. So again, people need to get it into their heads. It's particularly politicians. Read your history books. Find out what is what. Don't think you are the first person in the world that's ever come up with an idea. Because, as my grandfather used to say, there's nothing new under the sun, my boy. So, it's just a different way of going about things. And I have always seen myself, when I've been given serious authority, that we are curators. It's a curatorial role, right? If you're given power and authority, with that comes responsibility. Very, very important. And you've got to use that power responsibly. And consult with the people. And explain yourself. Because the people will understand. If you're fair with them, they'll be fair with you. That's what I've found. Give the audiences what they want to listen to and to watch. They will reward you with their viewership and your listenership. That's been my motto. So there we are. Explain this is a zebra, black and white stripes, or white way black stripes, says Rab Hill. What's your thoughts on chemtrails spoiling our once clear blue sky, Scotty, says Phil Jones Hammersley. Well, there's a lot of aircraft out there. It's very interesting. There are apps available, and you can just see the traffic that's flying around. And it takes a fair old bit of burning kerosene to get one of these big beasts up there. So, as a friend of mine once said, if you knew everything that was going on, you'd be very disappointed. So, we don't want everybody disappointed. 96% um, of people who reside in Gibraltar voted to remain in the EU. Might they be given another referendum in their own self-determination? Provide a majority to leave British rule, says Rudy Zack. Well, I think, Rudy, that so-called British rule 
um, has been dissipated over the years by uh, a lot of namsy pamsy politics and uh, they've lost it they've sold it you know the British government traditionally usually sell a country they actually a check changes hands and they sell it to someone else because they don't find the business of that place particularly profitable uh, timings and I think Gordon Brown sold a huge chunk of the UK family gold reserves to get the UK economy temporarily out of the mire. This was done just prior to the price of gold soaring. Yes, absolutely. So there you are, you're right. See more. I wish it didn't come to see more already because, oh yes, soaring a number of years back now. We all actually got robbed in the process because I can remember old ladies going into shops to sell their wedding rings to pay their electricity bills. So tot, tot. Tot, 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 I say. Maybe if Mrs. May is given a chance, she will get the UK back in order after Cameron and Osborne reign nearly destroyed the country. Well, what that was all about was really getting the money back from the people. The people got completely robbed to get the money back for the banks, to bail out the banks, because the banks had been doing bad business. And you can't really let the banking system collapse or the whole house of cards would come tumbling down. But um, I think we need to look at that. And also what should have happened there is that the public should have been issued with loan stock notes, right? Loan notes to say, we are giving our money to this bank. When it comes back in profit, uh, we'd like our uh, loan stock to go up a bit. Now, it might not be worth a lot of money, but it's a wee something to the people. Gibraltar, the Falklands, Scotland, Wales, there's not going to be much left of the Union. Well, the Union was very flawed in the first place, George, right? If you look carefully at the Union, you'll find it's very, very flawed, the whole selling of the Union, because the people that flogged Scotland to Westminster did not have the authority. They just happened to be aristocrats at the time. So they'd fought under a flag for the king 600 years earlier and uh, they'd hung on to it and they said, let's just flog the country because we've, we've drunk ourselves out of business here. So they got together and uh, they're very slippery and slithery people as human beings, I have to say that. And they got together and flogged a country that they didn't actually have the right to sell. So, uh, you know, it's time that country was given back. You know, you're an Argyle man, Scotty. Are you familiar with our wee tune of Danoon? Really, I know Danoon like the back of my hand. Now, where's the back of my hand now? Wait, let's see. Oh, yes. And um, all the wonderful characters in Danoon. So I know it well. I know Glen Masson. I know the Younger Botanic Gardens. I know the Lauder Memorial at Glen Branter. If you look at the memorial down at the Queen's Hall, you'll see the name of Captain John Lauder of the Argyle and Sutherland Highlanders. He was the son of Sir Harry Lauder, who was the highest paid performing artist in the world. So there you are. If you've ever seen the film Titanic, it was on last night, actually. And if you've seen the film Titanic, you'll see when the boat's about to leave Queenstown, they're loading on board cars and um, uh, they're, they're, they're on, a, on a swing, they're swinging the cars on board. And then when the couple get together, they go into one of the cars down in the storage uh, deck at the bottom. And um, Harry Lauder used to take his new old voice over to America when he went on to a fantastic stuff. And he's buried in the, in the Bent Cemetery in Hamilton. And uh, the old Duke of Hamilton, not the last one, uh, this one's grandfather, what we called the old Duke, um, and uh, I lived in the Hamilton Estates at one point, and uh, what we called the old Duke, we referred to as the old Duke, and um, he read the lesson at Sir Harry Lauder's funeral in the early 1950s. There you go, we a bit of knowledge for you there. You're talking about pawning wedding rings and the time these shops were closed. All they do is encourage thieves to pass on the stolen goods. And tradesman never sells his tools. These shops are full of... Hey, hang on. Full of... I can't see it. My fingers aren't big enough. So there we are. Sorry about that. Oh, here we go. Oh, my goodness me. We shouldn't have touched that. Right. I'm going to go back and see if I can do it again. Ah, uh, right. 
see what's happened here. Ah, have we lost you, I say. Right, can you still see me? And uh, if you can, that is excellent. And if not, what we'll have to do is get back in touch with you. Can you see me all right, folks? Now we're all watching their big style. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to see if I can get this one back. So I shall work away at it. You work with me, and I shall get this back for number two. Have we actually lost you there? Scotland does not want to be part of the British warmongering. Independence is a necessity, says Beth. Excellent stuff, Beth. Now, what McLean's doing here, guys, we uh, have lost picture here, so I'm just going to get it back. And um, there we are. Go live. Marvelous stuff. And uh, I shall join you just as quickly as I possibly can. You should be able to hear me with a bit of love. Of, I've got a bit of love. A bit of luck. I've got two systems running tonight. So you should still be able to hear me. If you can, let me know. And uh, we will catch up as soon as possible. All right. I'm just coming back to you. So do not dash off, I say. Uh, and um, I'll just do this. I'll just set everything up for us to come back to part two. Um, and this is our 28th program together, which is excellent. We like that. And this is the 2nd of April 2017. We like that as well. So I'm just going to set that up for you. And uh, you know to bear with me now anyway if we have to dash. Never a problem. And uh, so 2, 4, 17. Yes, and it's uh, the program. Uh, I'm doing all this. I'm typing as we speak, so if you see me looking down, that's what I'm actually doing. And I hope that you can still hear me uh, on the other system. So there we go. Yes, fabulous. And um, I shall just put part two. And then you know it's part two. And then I shall go live again okay folks right you should be able to see me hello there we are welcome back to me i say now can you all hear me and see me i hope you haven't pushed off because we don't want that so there you are remember i will always make an attempt to come back to you so give me a fair hearing if you ever lose me at any point then uh, give me a fair hearing because i'll always do my best to come back to you. All right, very, very important. George Raffin's watching. Angie Thompson, Dave Hemsley. And uh, that is fantastic. Everybody building up again, our audience building up. Tremendous. If you've just joined us, a very, very warm welcome to you. You are very welcome globally. Please put what country you're watching in so that we can actually find out what's what. Giuseppe Bacchetti's watching. Tremendous. John McDonough, you're back. Welcome. Hello from Paraguay. Isn't that tremendous? I love it. John is in Paraguay. He's lovely to have you from Paraguay. That's better, Scotty, says Dave Hemsley. Did you actually lose me, Dave, or were you still able to see the backup program? That's what I'd like to know. Andy McClory is watching. Tremendous stuff. Give me information, guy. Just love the technology, Captain, says George Raffin. Yes, but George, I'm not going to touch one of these see more things again. Because that can send the whole thing bananas, even a tiny, tiny finger touch. Because the technology is so sensitive. Uh, but I love the technology as well. It's tremendous because it's bringing us all together. It's bringing the world together globally. And it's tremendous that we are together. And remember, if you ever think NMD is being racist... You cannot actually be racist because there is only one race. The human race, and we are all members. And everyone smiles in the same language. Very, very important there. Uh, George is back, back again since Phil Jones Hammersley. Yes, indeed, Phil. Did you actually lose me or could you see me on a backup system? That's what I want to know. That's very important. Graham Badger, it just cut to the last few seconds of the broadcast. We're getting you now. Nicholas Sturgeon's clothing allowance, £80,000 a year, says Sandy. Excellent money, very well spent. I just wonder what the others charge. 
as probably a lot more Sandy. So there you are. So Sandy, let's not be trying to cock a snook at our finest politician. Remember, your mob had their chance and they blew it big time. They are now wandering about in the wilderness and will probably remain in the wilderness for many, many moons to come because they haven't backed Scottish independence. They betrayed their roots. They betrayed the Scottish people. And that was the end of that. And the Scottish people do not like being betrayed. I've had enough of that. Uh, no, Scotty, you just went. No backup thingy kicked in. You'll have to update the old computer, Scotty. So, George, this is why I'm asking for GoFundMe, George. So if you go on to www.gofundme.com forward slash Scotty hyphen McClue, stick in a couple of quid, a fiver, somebody popped in a hundred pounds, which was wonderful. A lovely, lovely person popped in a hundred pounds. But uh, I would like to see that as a thousand pounds by the end of tonight. So if all of you can go to GoFundMe and give a pound, two pounds, whatever, I can make that go further. Think of the five loaves and two fishes. The feeding of the 5,000. Lost just as Lynn K, but we're back. Uh, excellent stuff. The Scots are experts at betrayal. Scotty says, Sandy, how do you know? Some of us have very, very high standards and would not betray our roots, Sandy. And also our founder's roots, Kia Hardy, R.B. Cunningham Graham. There we are, the man that went on to found the original SNP. Hi, Scotty, from the mobile flooring showroom in Shannon's in Glasgow, says Derek McGonigal. Derek has a business of mobile flooring, and he will come to you. I like the idea of that. You should try and get Mark Zuckerberg to sponsor you, Captain, for all your business, says George Reffin. Absolutely, yes, a very good idea, George, and that may well be the case. I've already appealed principles only, please, because we don't want to waste... Uh, their time or my time, yes? My time is very, 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 very valuable. But remember this, yours is even more valuable. What about that? Hi, Scotty. Uh, you should, uh, what have we got? Um, what have we got? For the people, Scotty, says C. Leslie. Yes, absolutely. For the people. Very, very important. So there we are, three little initials. For the people. And this is the people show, folks. Now, time is tramping on. Can we uh, share, 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 share? That would be marvellous if we could do that. Excellent. Thank you for that. And uh, the subjects of every state ought to contribute towards the support of the government as nearly as possible in proportion to their respective abilities. Adam Smith's Wealth of Nations. Yes, Adam Smith. Buried, I think, if I remember rightly so, in the Canongate Kirkyard in Edinburgh, in the Royal Mile in Edinburgh. And I think Adam Smith from Kirkcaldy, from the Lang Toon, is buried there. And I've uh, got his Wealth of Nations book, a fine, fine piece of work. It is, absolutely. In those days you talked about the subjects. I think it's very important. Scott and Scotland needs to remember... Uh, when they go independent, they have to take the Queen and the Bible with them because these are stalwarts of this country. And remember, we Scots started the modern monarchy. Yes, uh, James the Sixth became James the First of uh, uh, England. What's the pin in your lapel, Scotty? Says Rudy. It's just a wee flower, Rudy. I'm very, very fond of it. A little forget-me-not, um, and I just like to have that there. And then I've also got my my chain here uh, on the other side. Uh, so there you go. If I need to flush, um, it's not the Lang tune, It's the right tune, says Sirius. Kirkcaldy's the Lang tune, I'm absolutely sure. Sure, Kirkcaldy's known as the Lang tune. The fifers will come on. Remember, if you're supping with the fifers, you have to use a Lang spoon. Right, um, a lang spoon in the lang tune. What about that? I don't know if you heard uh, the Tory MP on about Gibraltar, but it was worrying about Spain and Gibraltar. Yes, I wouldn't listen to any of that, George. There's a lot of hot air being talked at the moment. 
I would think the whole thing about Gibraltar, Spain would not be um, blocking or vetoing um, Scotland's entry into the EU. So don't listen to too much hot air. Say to yourself, who's saying this? Where is it coming from? And it's highly unlikely that they will have no agenda. Scotty McClure, that you're watching the new, right now, on Facebook Live, has got no agenda. We are just looking at the facts and having a chit-chat. That's what it's all about. Uh, Sandy Howden, they do not like the Queen, Scotty, you know that. Sandy, everybody loves the Queen. The Queen costs us about 50 to 60p every year. It's an absolute bargain. And it's very, very important that uh, people wanting independence do not try and bring the crown into it, right? Once you meddle with the crown, you're absolutely finished. Take my word for it. Now, uh, that mistake was made by the nationalists in the uh, 1940s and 1950s. Don't make it again is my message to them, all right? Otherwise, independence gets kicked into the long grass. But leave the crown and the Bible alone. Take them on board in a new independent Scotland and all will be well. So there you are. McClure has speak. Uh, John says you could get old Labour MPs um, and councillors on. They've got plenty of time now that they're unemployed. So they <laughs> get them on. Have not God first united these kingdoms both in language and religion and similitude of manners? Hath he not made us all in one island, compassed by one sea, King James of Scotland? Yes, because he has in terms of the crowns, not in terms of the parliaments. King James the first of Scotland was not around in 1707, Sandy. Very important to get that across to you. The line tune I heard is Ochterada, Captain. Ochterada, well it's certainly Ochterada is a line tune. I can remember the days when you actually drove through Ochterada. It was the main route. I think it would be the original A9, is that right? Uh, the A90 or the A9 going up to uh, through Ochterada. And there was a lovely, lovely fish and chip shop. And we used to stop. If you're away on a bus trip, or youth camps, anything like that, you always stopped to get yourself some fish and chips in Ochterada. Linda Marshall's watching Dinky Do, do you, Linda Marshall? Lovely to hear from you, I say. What a fabulous discussion tonight. If you've just joined us, a very, very warm welcome to the program. You're watching Scotty McClure live, broadcasting live on Facebook Live, the world's top broadcast platform. We've got people watching in Australia, we've got people watching in South America, in Canada, in America, in Russia, China, Japan, everybody is watching Scotty McClure right now. Sunday nights on uh, British Summertime, 10 o'clock sharp, 2200 hours, 10 o'clock sharp, be there or be square, I say never, ever, ever miss a second of Scotty McClure, you miss a second of Scotty McClure, you miss a moment of life and we're on one hour a week i don't think that's too much to ask this is the way television's going this is the future of broadcasting scotty mcclure is right at the very 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 cutting edge the sharp edge the pointy bit of international media and it's happening right now it's unfolding before your eyes guys so remember this is the biggest thing since marconi put the airwaves to use. Drop the handkerchief, his pal dropped the handkerchief. Uh, so there we are. Um, Sandy's talking about stuff. Sandy, you need to drop the attitude and say that you and Mob have gone now. So you are effectively rudderless. You're wandering about in the wilderness now. A clever man like you, Sandy, regardless of your politics, a clever man like you should not be wandering in the wilderness. So get on board and I think every party in the Scottish Parliament should back independence for Scotland because it makes economic sense and it makes common sense. Very, very important. Right? Big linoleum manufacturers in the land toon, says Rudy Sack. I think you're talking about the lang toon, Rudy. So is that a typo? You tell me. Uh, that's what we're talking about. Also, we've been looking at Brexit. Have we put the cart before the horse? Should we 
had triggered IndyRef2 and got the results back for that before we triggered Article 50 for the UK to leave the EU because now we don't know who's leaving and who's staying. So there we are. Because Scotland will probably just go independent and uh, we'll see how that pans out. Uh, Sandy, how did your team do today? Says George Willen. <laughs> yes, Lang, a typo, says Rudy. So, Kirkcaldy in Fife is the Lang tune. Uh, tank left at four, George, says Sandy. Oh, tup, 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 tup. The football, these guys are talking about the football now. Uh, one last share point, very important. Can everybody share this video? Share, 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 share. And this week there may well be three videos flying around for this actual show. So show number 28, you will have part one and part two. Also, there may well be a third show flying about because I've got two systems running. So we'll have to see what's actually happened with that. We'll have to see what is what. Um, and it'll be a slightly different camera angle. So we'll see what's happening there as well. Dave Hemsley and two others have shared the video. Thank you very much. Tremendous. Can everybody else share, 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 share. Tell everyone about this program because virtually every day in the Western world is on Facebook now. So there's no reason for us not to have a massive, massive, massive global audience every Sunday night at 10 o'clock sharp. If we can build our audience up, we can look at bringing on more programming for you. All right? So I'd be quite happy to do that. And uh, also, if you can go fund me. Now, take this seriously. Don't just go, ah, can't wait. It's getting nothing new. I mean, please, 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 I beg of you. And McClure doesn't often beg, but I beg of you, I shouldn't have to, for goodness sake, that you stick a couple of quid in to go fund me. If everybody does it, we will grow that fund, right? And the rate is moving at the moment, it will take over 100 years to reach target of £5 million. So I would rather £5 million of you stuck £1 in tonight, and then we will reach our target. And we will do it, folks. We definitely will. One of your shows is down says so Gordon Sterling, so there we are. Yes, uh, one of our ships is missing. Just be careful of taxation, man, Scotty. Sean, no problem at all. I've always been absolutely 100% on the level with all these things. So that's what will happen. Uh, Scotland was scaremongered into voting no, says George. They were, George. Yes, hope over fear and, uh, you know, sending up former uh, senior um, politicians, ex-prime minister, all that sort of stuff, shouting and bawling the odds, a lot of nonsense. So they are uh, worst thing that happened, but of course, the punishment, <coughs> do beg your pardon there, I shall have a sip of water. There we are. Cheers, love to see you. Mm. Oh, that's so good. Marvellous stuff. Ah, as Rhett say in China, uh, Borox, yes, absolutely. Well, I would say, Han Hao, Ni Hao, if you are watching in China. Uh, so, what are you talking about, Sandy Scotty? The SNP lets 60 year old people going to work in the buses on for nothing, while 59 year old unemployed people have to pay. Well, if you're unemployed at 59, then, um, you know, it depends if your journey is essential. If you're going to work, then I think probably there will be um, all sorts of possibilities, Sandy. So look into it properly and don't snipe too much from the sidelines. Start to say to yourself, hang on a minute, you can't actually get a piece of thin card between what was the old Labour Party long before New Labour came on. I mean, remember your lot really messed up in the 1st of May 1997. But you'd been kind of teetering on the brink since John Smith passed away, Sandy. So let's have the facts there. But um, instead of sniping from the sidelines, I think you should uh, start uh, seriously supporting the, the leading party. Uh, hello from Tel Aviv in Israel, from Elliot and Lewis. Hi, Louis, to my, my dear friends, the Fabers, 
who are in Tel Aviv, in Israel. Dinky do to you guys. I hope you are having a lovely time. And uh, I keep saying it, nobody wants to hear it, but the vote was rigged. Audio and video evidence shows it, says Dan Williams. Well, Dan, I never like to uh, doubt people completely, and I never like to go too far into the conspiratorial. So what we've got to make sure is that there's no hanky-panky, no skullduggery in Indira F2, and if the media are going to be biased, they need to butt out. We need to get our media sorted, so the powers that be need to be speaking to me very, very soon, I say. You can't use the bus pass until 9 a.m., says Eddie Dover Sr. There you go, Sandy, you see? You're uh, watched on here. Nonsense, Scotty! Free travel for 60 plus while unemployed 59 year olds pay. Well, if you're 60 plus, then there's a chance you're retired, so it's a good thing that you can get uh, cheap or get free on the buses. An age limit has to be set, Sandy, says Rudy Sachs. So, what are you wanting, Sandy? Are you wanting free travel for all unemployed? Is that what you're saying? Because uh, you lot were in for how many years was it? How many years did we have your mob in for? And they never came up with it. Interesting. Uh, not If you're on PIP or ESA, you can get a bus pass, says Angie Thompson. There you go, Sandy. If you're unemployed and you're on PIP or ESA, you can get yourself a bus pass. So you can relax and chill, old la. And uh, Scotty, I've been many times on polling stations, digging deep now. Mm. Scotland can't afford to go independent. SNP can't deliver the promises. First time they tried for independence, they relied on the oil industry. Look what happened to the offshore industry they relied on. Sean, get this into your head. Let's have the facts here. No, 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 no. Scotland can't afford not to go independent. Right? Scotland sends £40 billion a year to Westminster and gets a tiny bit of that back. So it's like giving your man all your wages. And she gives you back your beer money. That's called the Barnett Formula. The BBC takes £325 million a year out of Scotland. Right? It takes 9% of the licence fee and delivers back 3% on programming. These are only two tiny examples. Oil is only about 8 or 9% of the whole Scottish thing. But still the oil is flowing and there are new fines all the time. And the price is on its way back up. Alright? So, Scotland can definitely afford to go independent. I can tell you that now, free gratis and for nothing. Whether they do or not is another discussion, but they can certainly afford to, and they can't really afford not to go independent. Okay? Very, very important. So right now, Scotland's not independent, and you've got children starving. You've got food banks. So don't talk to me about affordability. Um, Sandy Hayden says it was Labour who introduced it, Scotty. Catch up. Yes, that's a long, long, long time ago. Why does the gov Scottish government shut down the BBC, says Willie? I think you mean not shut down the BBC. Why does the Scottish government not shut down the BBC? The Scottish government at the moment does not have the authority over broadcasting, Willie. So they need to see to that very, very quickly. It's a very pivotal and important thing. And all broadcasting in Scotland, Scottish broadcast companies, should really be regulated from Edinburgh, from Holyrood. And uh, they should have uh, the say so over what broadcasts in Scotland. Indirect boss, half your audience, Scotty says Lynn Kay. No, no, we're just mentioning it, Lynn. Uh, compassionate labour for the poor. Joanne Lamont advised us all that we must stop this something for nothing society, says Rudy Zek. Um, I have to say, if I'd been leading the Labour Party at the time, I would have got in touch with uh, whoever was the leader. I can't remember because they changed them around so often. Whoever was the leader at the time in London said, Listen, bud, I'm doing something very politically, uh, very political. I'm on, you're on your own. We're going separate in Scotland and we're going to back independence. Ooh, you'd have had a different story there. Uh, what about fracking in Scotland? Will it change the oil prices? Well, who knows? Scotty, are you going to sing? If so, hurry. 
The number two boss is due in Shettleston. I throw myself under it, says George Leonard. <coughs> George, I would never, ever, ever have it that you did not enjoy my singing. So pin back your mugs. Here we go. I have to go. Thanks, guys, for a brilliant, brilliant program tonight. Tremendous stuff. We are on the march. Building, 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 building the people's program just for you. Go for me and let's do it. Right. Are you ready, George? Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Take care, everybody, as you go. Goodbye, everybody. Of we Tarzan, au revoir, and the cheerio. Cheerio, my loves. Dinky-doo, have a great week. Scotty McClure has left the building.